I first heard about John Irwin uh, after I was released from uh, prison. I had heard about Project Rebound for several years and I heard about the work that they were doing with uh, incarcerated individuals upon their release. And so, uh, but once, uh, once I was released, I came to Project Rebound and uh, I picked up one of his books, The Warehouse Prison, where I read about his, his story and his experience and his uh, journey from prison to uh, the university here at San Francisco. John Irwin mirrors the epitome of accomplishments in terms of post-incarceration and what a person can do with their life once they have the required skill sets and determination in place. Um, considering all of the things that he had to go through, the accomplishments, um, <clears throat> the days of discord in his life when all things seemed uh, just impossible to, to overcome, um, he struggled through that. He made it, became successful. He was a trailblazer, a pioneer. Not only did he like, create that encouragement of people of saying that I can do that too, but, but he, went, he created a, a road for you to actually take that you can get there and, and even gave you a ride along the way if you needed it. So um, I think that, that distinguish, distinguishes like John Warren for Irwin from a lot of the work that other people have done as well. But that also came with the status that he created around himself through academics, and so he 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 was able to do, to do that um, through his abilities, right? Through his mental abilities and the status and friendships that he made within um, uh, um, academics, as opposed to someone who donates a million dollars and they get a building built for him. A lot of young individuals growing up in the 80s, uh, 90s, looked up to uh, legacies that were criminal in nature and found themselves uh, you know, in juvenile facilities, penitentiaries across the nation. A lot of folks that were trailblazing uh, you know, pathways into the penitentiary are also you know, shifting consciousness and awakening and uh, starting to understand uh, the role of education in their lives. So when we start to look at that, the legacy that John left as he came out of Soledad State Prison in the 60s was, uh, was actually a, a legacy that he left for a lot of us. San Francisco uh, State just recognized Project Rebound at the academic senate level uh, to be uh, replicated in CSUs uh, statewide. So with that, uh, the legacy seems to be you know, getting bigger and bigger. This is uh, an opportunity for us to, to, to make changes. Rebound is a, a pathway. It is an opportunity for us to get out there and do things that uh, clearly our community needs. Even though I, I just recently heard of uh, learned about John Irwin, uh, nevertheless, I'm ex I'm filled with extreme gratitude for for as my predecessor said that he's he's a pioneer. You know, whereby I use everything I learned to change uh, the society as as I know it. John was a researcher and a writer, and he was never going to stop learning about people and writing about them. Um, you know, he was interested in not just the prison system and the kind of damage it was doing, but he was interested in individuals and the impact that prison had on them. John loved hanging around convicts. <laughs> and he, he called them convicts. He didn't like all this formerly incarcerated stuff. He felt that um, convicts were his people. And he really loved his last research project, um, which was ended up in the book Lifers. He loved going to San Quentin and hanging out there. But even when the book was finished, he kept going to San Quentin. It was like he was hanging around with the guys. These were his people. He loved it. And so there was the research part, and then there was the personal, um, which I don't think John made it much of a distinction. He was motivated by, um, I think, curiosity and, and love of his people and um, the joy of just hanging around with the guy.
in order to progress in life. An aging swordsman spoke about the stages in the pursuit of knowledge. During the first stage, studies led to nothing, and the person thinks that he and other people lack skills. He is worthy of nothing. During the middle stage, he is still worthy of nothing, but is now aware of his worthlessness and can see it in others. During the next stage, he prides himself on his achievements and is praised for them, but abhors other people's inadequacies. He is worthy. At the highest stage, the person looks as if he knows nothing. However, there is one more stage, the supreme one. The person realizes that the way is endless and that he will never complete it. He is aware of his shortcomings and denies any success. He is humble, but recognizes the full length of the way. He applies his knowledge to himself and no longer to others. In order to progress in life, one has to improve every day in an endless process.